This story is so complex with so many disturbing and moving parts. It looks like a dungeon. They, these people were stored. in Pennsylvania has led investigators to South Florida. Four mentally handicapped it. That's from authorities speaking Wednesday, three days after discovering four disabled adults locked in this dark, damp basement. Uh, these people ran. were stored like surplus meat in, in the basement. Mentally handicapped people chained up and locked in a Philadelphia basement into what's being called a, quote, house of horrors has shocked even the most veteran police officers in Philadelphia. Quite simply, if this case just makes you shake your head, I mean, it's despicable. Have you heard of the basement of horrors? I only heard of this case while I was browsing TikTok. The woman that I was watching only showed pictures, so I had to look and comment to find more information on the case. In the comments, I found that this case had a movie that was based on it called A Fall From Grace by Tyler Perry. And let me tell you, this movie was so good. So good. There were times when I had to pause so I could get myself together to watch the rest. Anyway, I know that films that are based on true stories have a tendency to make a true story more interesting than it really was because of creativity and to gain more interest from the audience. A Fall From Grace, even though it's a great movie that left me on the edge of my seat, isn't 100% true to the actual case, but we'll compare the reasons why later in a part two. Don't be fooled though, the true story is just as interesting as the movie was and I didn't realize how much information there was about this case before I started. But the more I researched, the more I fell deeper into the rabbit hole. This case is known by two names, The Basement of Horror and Philadelphia Dungeon Kidnapping. But no matter what you call it, the tragedy is still the same. On October 17, 2011, a property manager by the name of Turgut Gosleveli noticed there were bowls of water in a dog bowl and thought that one of his tenants had a dog even though the property was a pet-free building. When he unlocked the basement door, he would discover that his intuitions were correct. There were two small dogs living in a basement, but that wasn't the thing that shocked him the most. It was the four other adults looking back at him, too frightened to move out of fear of being punished even more. There was one person strapped to the furnace and the other three laying on cushionless mattresses with ragged blankets and all in a small space that could barely fit them all in there comfortably. These victims, Tamara Brendan, Darren McLemere, Herbert Knowles, and Edwin Sanabria, all raging in age from their late 20s to their early 40s, were tortured mentally, physically, and emotionally by one woman and her accomplices. Her name is Linda Ann Weston, and her accomplices, Eddie Wright, George Thomas, and Jean McIntosh. Weston targeted victims were mental disabled people for financial gain. She would capture her victims from dating apps or caretaker services and would trick her victims into making her their primary caretaker. From there, Weston and her accomplices cashed in over $200,000. Weston targeted mental disabled people not only so she could cash out their checks, but also because they were easy to capture, persuade, and control and Weston thought that they would be unlikely to escape or ask for help. Among the victims that were rescued, there was one person by the name of Tamara Brendan that shared her stories of the torture and mistreatment that she experienced in the basement of hell. Tamara was the only victim that was in custody of Weston for a decade. Tamara was captured after she was tricked by Weston of a babysitting job. She was held captive from 2001 to 2011 and during that time, she reported that Weston constantly beat her, forced her into prostitution, and was even forced to have a baby that was later abducted for human trafficking. Tamara and the other victims were treated the same as well. They were beaten, shot with a pellet gun, starved, and they were so malnourished that they were forced to drink their own urine in order to try to stay alive. Hit me with a bat in my head and all this was all bleeding and everything. That was real dirty of you. That was wrong. Besides the victims and the two dogs that were found in a basement of horrors, there were also eight children 
that were found upstairs in the main part of the property. Their conditions were no better than the victims found in the basement. They were both abused and malnourished. Their ages ranged from toddlers to teens, while the youngest child in the group was only two years of age. These children came from the adult captives that were forced into pregnancy by Weston. Was she trying to human traffic them as well? A few days later, police find and rescue 10 more children, malnourished, some close to death. Even though her victims were rescued, there were more of them that didn't have the chance to be rescued. And those aren't including the babies that were abducted from forced pregnancies. One man by the name of Bernardo Rams, age 25, was locked in a closet while he was tortured with a hammer and later died from starvation. Bernardo was kept locked in a closet for two months and only ate four times throughout that time period. One victim died in 2005 due to malnourishment. Another died from bacteria meningitis and starvation in 2008. There was only a baby two years of age that came up missing. This baby was Weston's own niece that she was given custody over and was never discovered and the baby's whereabouts were never told. Weston's childhood, like most killers and hardened criminals, was not the best upbringing. Her mother often treated her the same way as Weston treated her victims. Weston reported that her mother would often beat her, neglected her, and even prostituted her before she was even a teenager. Before she captured the mentally disabled victims in a basement of horror, Weston held her own family captive after the death of their parents in the 1970s. A man by the name of Troy, Weston's brother, reported that she would drug him into submission, fed him roaches, and would force him to have intercourse with other members of the family as she did with her other captive. Weston treated her family no different from how she treated her captive. Not only did she force Troy into incest, she forced the other members of her family to be involved with incest as well. By the time the police discovered the basement of horrors, the only relative that was discovered was Beatrice Weston. Beatrice was put under the care of her aunt, Linda Weston, in 2002, and was also not spared from the cruel treatment from Weston. Once Beatrice was rescued, she filed a lawsuit against the city of Philadelphia, but in the end, the case was ultimately dismissed. Jean McIntosh, Watson's daughter, was sentenced to 40 years in federal prison. Watson, on the other hand, was ordered to pay back $270,000 to the Social Security Administration, but that wasn't even the worst punishment that she was sentenced to. Watson was also sentenced to life in prison, plus another 80 years slapped on top of that without parole. The state even dropped her charges so that federal prosecutors could be able to get her for hate crimes and human trafficking. In the end, Watson pled guilty to 196 federal counts, including but not limited to murder, kidnapping, sex trafficking, hate crime, forced labor, benefits fraud, and many more. Linda Ann Watson was a woman that created a living hell for people right from her basement. She was a trickster, a manipulator, a killer, and honestly, sick in the head. I can't even imagine how much worse it could have been or how many more people would have had to lose their lives by the hands of Watson and her accomplices if they were never caught. You never really know anyone's true intentions, so just do me a favor, be careful, be safe, keep your head on a swivel with your surroundings, and pay attention, because these advice may just save your life. Hello everybody, I am sorry that I haven't been here for about mm, a, a good month. Um, I just finished college, and I wanted to get all of that out the way before I continued to do something else. You know, you got to handle your responsibilities first, right? Right? But while I was gone, my second video blew up to 5.5K views. Oh, thank you guys so much for watching it. I put in a lot of work, a lot of tears. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But I did put in a lot of work, so I really appreciate it. Also, I just got a new mic. Um, I really don't know if this is a good one for me. Uh, I just got to test it out a little bit. But if you have any more recommendations, please let me know because I really want to improve the quality of my videos. So I hope you all have a good one and thank you.